Tia Fimo vows to batter Cambosis in the rematch. I really don't particularly care for neither one of these guys, but let's review. Push the weight in our fix. Flex the lavish one in the six. Hey, with the runner boy, you niggas no question. You were one of motherfucking high stepping. Hey, you never had a big enough weapon. Hey, motherfucker, never learn your lesson. Right. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Woof. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, they walk and drink blood things out. Full moon, motherfucker, change like a hoe, nigga. I'm just a nigga from the hood trying to stack a little cheddar for the money. Drew Titan, Bronze on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. You know, every time this kid says something, you know, I look at it like, yo, your career basically just started, in my opinion, and I'm already looking at you as a guy that could have been. You could have done the right thing. You didn't do it. Even if you failed when you were supposed to do it, you didn't do it. You try to go in another direction and you tripped and shot yourself in the head. What am I talking about? Well, there's 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 a lot to unpack with Tiafima Lopez. But um we're gonna we're gonna cover a little bit here in this video. Just a little bit. All right, first off. Let's review. Boxing scene. Link will be in the description. Um, Tia Fima Lopez says he, he vows to batter Cambosis in a rematch. I particularly do not care for either one of those guys. I'll review. And for those of you who listen to me for the first time, I'll review just for your ears. But people who've been rocking with me for a long time, they know. You read what it says here. It says if there's a line in trash talking, Tiafimo Lopez may dangerously be close to treading on the former lightweight champion from Brooklyn. They don't claim him out here from what I understand, but whatever. Was recently asked about his admittedly disastrous night last year against George Campos at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Lopez, the heavy favorite, suffered a points loss to the Aussie in what was arguably the top upset of the year. If you've been living on the moon for the last year, Lopez was a heavy favorite to beat and destroy uh, 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 George Cambosis. It didn't happen. He ended up getting dropped in the first round, came back, um, he dropped, uh, he was getting out box, and then George Cambosis ran into some trouble. The tenth or so, but maintained, and then it was back to business, and he washed Lopez. Y'all pointed him, and that was the end of it. Um, article also reads: uh, Lopez, however, has not accepted the lone defeat of his career, at least judging by his public uh, pronouncements. In fact, he has gone as far to say that there was a conspiracy against him in that fight. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me read that one more time for you. He has gone as far as to say that there was a conspiracy against him in that fight. Lopez, to be sure, was hospitalized afterward uh, for what was reported to be the presence of air in his lung cavities, a life-threatening condition. So let me stop right there for a second. You mean to tell me that Tiafima Lopez says that there's a conspiracy against him in that fight. He felt he won the fight. There was air in his lung, air in his lungs, the lung cavities, which was a life-threatening condition. I just heard Tio Sr. say that he fought with a broken elbow. I, was like, I just heard it just yesterday. Just yesterday I heard that. I'm like, well, now his elbow was broke. So he had air in his lungs, his elbow was broken. I heard his throat collapsed, all kinds of weird stuff. Sounds like excuses. And T.O., let me explain something to you, man. And while your dad's listening, you too, man. This is boxing, right? No room for excuses, right? Let me remind you what this man said about Deontay Wilder. Just got to be careful. I think that uh, whatever it is, I think Wilder has had too much time in his hands. He need to go back to the gym. 
and he needs to start getting ready for another fight just to show people what he's he is the WBC heavyweight world champion and, and so on and so forth. So he can be back on that on that um, stable of fighting those guys like Fury and AJ again. You know, so he need to focus on his own damn self. Go back in the gym. He has too much time in his hands. Get ready for a fight. I don't know if he has a fight lined up. And just stop talking about a dent in your head and stuff like that. It happens. It's boxing. Move on. You're a grown man. Stop being a bitch. Wow. You're a grown ass man. Stop being a bitch. Stop talking about a dent in your head. It's boxing. It happens. The man just said that there was a conspiracy against him in that fight. His father yesterday just said in an article somewhere, hey man, he had a broken elbow. His 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 throat collapsed. He had air in his lungs, my neck, my back. Word. Let me, let me, let me go ahead and read this article. Now Lopez, 25 years old, has attempted to res uh, resurrect his career at junior lightweight uh, this Saturday against Pedro Campo. 10-round fight. Asked during the media worker earlier this week to describe how he expects the rematch if one can ever be made, because you, you already know this is the business of boxing. Um, Lopez did not uh, uh, mind sharing a few thoughtful words in reference to George Cambosis. He says he'll be the one dying this time. <laughs> this time, as if he died the first time, as if Tiafimo Lopez was, you know, at, at death's door last time. All right, this is something he's telling the Fight Hub, by the way. Um, and I'll make sure I'll drop him or anything like that. If the fight even uh, if, the, if the fight was to come to come that close, I'll come to pick him up and I'll do it again if the ref won't stop it. Now, this is his words. I want to kill him. Not really. You know what I'm saying? Got to put a beating on him, a long one. Those are his words. Cambosis. Lost the light heavyweight titles. He won off of Lopez last year, this past June, suffering a unanimous decision defeat against who? Devin the Dream Haney in their undisputed lightweight bout at Marvel Stadium in Melbourne, Australia. The two are set to fight a rematch in October. No announcement yet. Where This is August. Yeah, no announcement yet. Asked to elaborate about why he holds so much rancor towards Cambosis. Lopez shrugged his shoulders before alluding to the alleged skullduggery <laughs> in their fight. Oh, man. It's just the way it is, Lopez said. It's who I am. It's who he is, right? Cambosis had to do what he had to do. However, it's the things behind that I am not okay with. So it sounds like he's standing on his square in reference to there being some schmuckery going on. Um, he had a collapsed throat, a broken elbow, air in his lungs. And he said he thought he won the fight on the cards. Now, a man with a broken elbow. I, I've never seen a man with a broken elbow fight like the way he did. I guess because he's a warrior, right? i never seen a man with a collapsed lung and a broke up throat whatever whatever the hell I, I i never seen him perform like that plus when the ring was empty i have it on good authority that he did his famous backflip in the ring still did it the arena was empty but so what right but he still feels that there's a conspiracy against him you know what to your female man what this is is the universe let me bring you up to speed. And this is the short version. Myself and a lot of people rooted for you against Tiafimo Lo I mean, against uh, 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 Vasily Lomachenko. We picked you to win it. We said Lomachenko's un he's overrated. And you're going to beat him. Nobody anticipated Lomachenko not throwing a punch until the sixth round, but whatever. And although he picked up the pace, you did enough to win the fight, and we were happy for you. In which you came up with three belts. Let's not forget Vasily Lomachenko ducked Devin Haney, which is how Devin Haney ended up with the WBC strap. 
because he ducked them. Everyone likes to call Devin Haney an email champion, but they never want to talk about who sent the email rather than fight him. You fighters know exactly what you're doing. You know how Dev, how uh, dangerous Devin Haney is. So Lomachenko ducked him to fight you because he thought you was the easier route. Surprise, you beat him. And we were all happy saying, all right, you know, because Tio, you know, he's a takeover, right? He's going to be a man of his word. He's going to step up to the plate. He's going to actually fight for undisputed. No. Something called a franchise status came with that beating of uh, Lomachenko. And you started running around calling yourself undisputed, which was not accurate. So then we was wondering what the hell was going on because last we checked, you had to request the franchise status and had to be reviewed by a board. They have to take a vote and say, okay, this guy deserves to be franchise champion. Something that happened with Vasily Lomachenko, but we're still not clear on that because we know what the rules say. You have to uh, ask to be franchise champion and they have to vote on it. That's what the rules say. Unless it's changed in the last year, you know, Risa Suleiman and these sanctioning bodies, all of them, they change rules every other minute. So when Vasily was asked, yo, look, man, they, he said, yo, man, they offered me the franchise status and I accepted it. But then Mauricio Suleiman said, no, he requested. So Vasily, somebody's lying. Whether it was offered to you and accepted or you asked for it, you had to say yes at some point because you had it. And remember when the, uh, the franchise status was not transferable? Well, surprise. Tio wins and he ends up with it. And Vasily went home with nothing. You ducked Devin and you lost your belts to uh, Lopez. And we were happy. But then there was a problem. You started talking about, oh, I'm, I'm undisputed. We was like, no, 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 no. Wait, hold on. Devin has a real belt. And then the games began. That's how it happened, Tiafimo. You sold out, man. And we found out later that Devin was never on the menu. You thought we forgot? You thought we forgot about the interview you did? I play it often. I'm not going to play it now. You sat down with, with Mauricio Suleiman. And during the interview, you said that you and Suleiman and your daddy or whatever put together a plan and Devin being a champion was never on the menu. So you could scream and holler and, and, and boast and do everything. You remember that? You know what? I got to play it. I got to play it for y'all. I got to play it for y'all. Nope. I'm going to play it. Let's see. Hey Mauricio, uh, season's greetings, of course. Uh, Time out, that's not it. This is it. Hey, De Devin Haney made a comment, you know, trying to make whatever it is. But at the end, of, at the end of the day, Devin, you don't know. The WBC is not going to have you, even if you do the the, the competition, they're not going to have you fight for the title. You can get mad at everything. I'm fighting for the title after this fight. For the IBF. And then after that, me and Loma for all four. And where are you? You're not going to get a shot, bro. And you don't know that. But we do. And that's what we did. I'm not going to fight more fights. So it is what it is, man. Talk what you got to talk, my dude. But at the end of the day, you're not being, you're not becoming a world champion at 135. Hey, the, the In the words of Roy Jones Jr., y'all must have forgot. I didn't. So you want to talk about grand scheme? I use that word often. How dare you? In this article, what is the exact word you said? There was a conspiracy against him in that fight. That's what you felt. That's what you say to people. A conspiracy? When you said that, I know Suleiman was like, oh my God, he was, I didn't mean for him to go say that to the public. That was between us. I told him that in, in confidence. But there was a problem. You see, you began to think that you was this rock star and you really wasn't. You really wasn't. 
you conned Trilla into giving you some bread? You remember that fiasco? You couldn't live up to that hype? George Cambos is chased all around town. He find, long story short, he finally gets the fight. Drops your monkey ass in the first round. And you battled back. And you dropped George in the tenth. But by then, you dug too much of a hole. And now you on here making excuses. You know the same excuses you said Deontay Wilder said, or oh, dents in his head. Stop being a little bitch. Get back in the gym. I put this picture here for a reason, because the whole time your face looking like that, the whole time your father, you see your dad right there, telling you that you're winning the fight. And now that you've lost, it was my throat, my lungs, my elbow now. That, just yesterday, I'm hearing about his elbow being broken. That's what your father said, my man. With each passing day, you look dumber. Now you're at 140. You got some work to do tonight. You could wash this kid or, you know, look average. What's, what's next for your 140? Ron Garcia? Hey, man, I think you beat Ron Garcia. But um, Josh Taylor, pump your brakes. Catterall, pump your brakes. This is shark infested water. See, this is what you get. You may as well have just fought Devin Haney, but that's gone now. Because now when it comes to Devin Haney, I'm looking at you like, what has he done? What has he done? You don't deserve it now. What have you done? Man, y'all believe the hype of this kid if you want to. But um, we know what he called himself, but with each passing day, when he started acting funny, the takeover became the fakeover really fast, didn't it? But we're going to see what you do tonight. I mean, you're supposed to win. Are you? Your dad said their only mistake was sticking around 135 for too long. No. Your mistake was not being a man of your word. Your mistake was believing in Mauricio Suleiman. But you know what? Suleiman would have took care of you. All you had to do was win. Your mistake was taking George Cambosis not serious. You didn't think he was a threat. He boxed your goddamn face in. Now, how does a rematch play out? I don't know. But Boxing 101 says you make a your opponent dangerous when you don't take him serious. So if y'all do run it back, who knows? Maybe the real Tia Fima will come out. Who knows? Or maybe George is on even even that even though he lost to uh, uh, Devin Haney, maybe he's still on all cylinders. Maybe he looks at you as light work now. Maybe he gets in there and starts clowning you. He outboxed you once. There's no reason why he feels he can't do it again. So y'all need to come to an agreement. In fact, forget Ryan Garcia. I don't want to see anything else after this fight tonight. I don't want to see anything else but you versus Georgie Porgy. If George don't get that rematch with... um. Devin, because that's not etched in stone. I don't care what no one says. But y'all tell me, y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Bronx on deck. Move!